for the moms who raised us up, gave us love, and made us strong. For the praying moms who don't always know what to do, but always know who to talk to. For the hurting moms who've loved and lost, but never given up. For those who never got called mom, but who cared for us all like a mom would. For the young moms who became moms sooner than expected and gave it all they had. For the single moms who tirelessly and courageously learned how to do this on their own. For the stepmoms and the stand-in moms who rose to the occasion and loved us well. For the working moms, the stay-home moms, the cooking moms, and the takeout moms, thank you for teaching us how to walk, how to learn, and how to make a difference. For taking care of us when you barely had enough time to take care of yourself. For comforting us when we felt alone and afraid. For lifting us up when others put us down. For the rides, the meals, the laundry, and the birthday parties. For the years, tears, laughter, and love. It's not enough, but we want to say thank you. for doing for us what we could never do for ourselves. We love you, we honor you, we remember you today. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. I'm obviously not Doug. So uh, I was pulling some double duty. That's why I was coming down so late this morning. But it is good to have everyone here this morning. Uh, for those of you that are joining us online, we apologize. We had some technical difficulties with Facebook, but it should be working now. Fingers crossed and praying to the Lord that that's the way it's working. Uh, just a couple of a quick, uh, couple quick announcements. Um, don't forget that we do have, <clears throat> excuse me, the Senior Adult Fun Day that will be going on at Neals Creek Baptist Church on May 12th from 9.30 a.m. until lunch. So if you're interested in that, please make sure that you uh, check with Patsy in the office and get some more information um, about that. If you are interested in going on the New York mission trip to help with Swerve Church, that will be happening on July the 10th through the 16th. There will be an interest meeting that will be taking place on Sunday, May the 11th, excuse me, May 15th, excuse me, May 15th, right after church. Coincidentally, also at the same time, we're going to have a choir interest meeting on the 15th after service. So if we have some crossover there, uh, just come see me and say, hey, I got to go to the New York interest meeting, but I do want to sing, and I will say, okay, and you can go on into that interest meeting, and that way, that way we don't have to bounce back and forth and be late for anything like that. Uh, also, on Sunday, June the 5th, here in the Fellowship Hall, we will have a bridal shower for a very special uh, lady at our church, uh, whose name we cannot mention at this particular moment, but if some of us may know who she is, that will be happening on Sunday, June the 5th. Uh, be a floating attendance between 2 and 4. 
4 p.m. Uh, she is registered on Amazon. There is a link on the digital bulletin if you'd like to take a look at that and see what you would like to pick up for her. Uh, but once again, it is good to have everyone here this morning, and we are so grateful to be here in the house of the Lord to worship our Savior. Let's open with a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you, God. This service is for you. We are here to worship you. We thank you for allowing us into your presence today because everything is all for you. We are here to worship you. Lord, I pray that we would humble ourselves as we come into your presence and help us to lay everything else aside at your feet. God, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Well, again, it is good to see everyone here today. Let us stand and let us sing a song of praise this morning as we worship our Savior, because it is because, all because of Jesus Christ, that we are able to worship Him in freedom from our sins. Giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory. Maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your worth. King over all the universe, to you be the glory. And I am alive because I'm alive in you. And it's all, and it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and raised this dead man's life. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. Of every breath I breathe, giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory, maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your worth, king over all the universe, to Because I'm alive in you And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ It covers me and raised this dead man's life it's all because of Jesus. Every sunrise sings your praise. The universe cries out your praise. I'm singing freedom all my days. Now that I'm alive, it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers, that covers me and raised this dead man's life. It's all because of Jesus, and it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and raised this dead man's life. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. I'm alive.
As Terry comes up this morning, I do want to make mention of uh, one request. Um, please be in prayer for Ryan Bledsoe's wife, Stephanie. She is uh, not doing pretty good. She's doing okay, uh, but she had to go in and have a medical situation taken care of this morning. Uh, she may have to undergo some outpatient surgery today. So just be in prayer for uh, Ryan and his family this morning. I'm going to be, oh, excuse me, uh, I'm going to be reading from uh, Psalm 122, uh, and it's about the joy of going into the house of the Lord. And if you would stand as we read uh, in honor of God's word. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to the testimony of Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for the thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will say, peace be within you, because the house of the Lord our God I will seek your good. Uh, if you would, let's bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this place we can go, reserved for the worship of you. Thank you for the people of Booz Creek First Baptist who gather here today to learn what's honest, what's eternal, what's true. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us and the blessings that you send us. As we join in worship, let us feel the joy your love and the hope that only you can give. We offer a heart full of praise this morning, and we just ask you to bless us in this morning. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, once again, let us join together. And let us worship our Father this morning as we sing of his love for us. As we sing how deep the Father's love for us. Why 
should, why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart, his wounds have paid my our Father, and that we could never even hope to begin to pay back. He is our hope in life as we go through this life, through all of its troubles and turmoils, and He is our hope in death for our only hope in salvation. What is our hope? What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone, what is our hope? souls to him belong who holds our days within his hand what comes apart from his command and what will keep us to the end the love of christ in which we stand sing out church oh sing oh sing
Cal. Good morning. Everybody doing well? I'm not going to mention it, but weather changes in North Carolina. <laughs> Just saying, right? But that's okay. It's changed everywhere I've ever lived. And that's good. Happy Mother's Day. Aren't you glad it's Mother's Day? We'll do this again in June for Father's Day. Not quite as whatever, but, <laughs> you know, we have a lot to be grateful for, for each of our moms. Um, well, we want to pray and ask the Lord to speak to us. Mother is God's idea. That's the message title, and that is the way it is, right? It was his idea. It wasn't something that a committee came up with. Um, and so, we want to talk about what it means to be the best mom possible um, and the right mom and the right dad, or if you're not a mom or dad, fine. But the point for all of us is follow Jesus. He would say simply, follow me. That's what he says. And that's what we want to do, whatever the case may be. So, as we've done each week, I want us to pray. And you know what we're going to pray. One thing. Lord, help me get the main thing, the one thing that I need. Because, you know, sometimes there's just one thing that you need. And the father really, really knows, just like the mom really, really knows. You know, the, the eyes in the back of the head. What are you doing? How did you know I was doing something? They just know, right? It, isn't it amazing? I mean, it's amazing to me. How would she know that? Anyway, God knows way better. And so let's pray and talk to him. Father, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for your um, word. Thank you for Jesus coming, dying on the cross, rising again, being enthroned, living today, reigning. And Lord, thank you that you know us. You know everything about us. You know the intention of every thought. You know the needs of our heart. And so, Lord, I'm asking you, speak to each of us. The one thing, the main thing that each of us needs. Um, and we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, turn to Genesis chapter 3. We're going to look there because that's the first time mother is mentioned. And so, best place to start is the, the, the foundation. Always the foundation. In Genesis 3, verse 20, here's what Adam said. Now, the man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all the living. Now, there's a lot that happened before this, and so we're going to kind of just look at this whole thing. What's going on here? They're in the Garden of Eden. Uh, it's the beginning of time, and so what's going on? Well, first of all, uh, let's just look at, at the first mom. You know, lots of stuff's been written about moms and mothers and all those kind of things. A lot of ink, a lot of ink. So, number one. Eve was the design of God. He says in Genesis 1.26, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, let us make them male and female. So, something about male and female, man and woman, uh, mom and dad here, reflects, reveals the image of God. So it's his design. It's God's design. It's his blueprint for human beings, for the human race, for each of us, for all of us together. So it's the design of God. And there's four basic things I want to see about this revealing that, uh, that, that God does about his design. The revealing, first of all, of his design. And um, I've got to get this in somewhere. There's three things about that revealing. Number one, if the design of God is to be revealed as it should be, the image of God. Uh, you got a man up and a woman up. Okay? Each man has got a man up, each woman's got a woman up. That's just the way it is. What do you mean? Well, it's interesting here, the image of God, if, if the image of God is going to be seen, it means that male and female both have to have input. Both have to be part of this. The image of God is not just one person. 
it's really not just two people. It's man and woman, male and female, revealing who he is. Why? Well, he's way bigger than we could put on a piece of paper or a, a movie or anything like that. He's so massively awesome and wonderful and great. I mean, it's kind of like, anybody here been to the Grand Canyon? Okay. When you go there, I remember being the first time I ever went there. And I went there and I got to this edge and I was literally breathless. It was like, whoa. And pictures don't do it. I mean, you just, you just, you just can't. Movies, videos, pictures, whatever. You just can't do it. But when you're there and you're looking at it, it's like, and it would take 10,000 pictures to begin to look at it. Because, I mean, I was looking from the top of the rim. Have you ever been down to the bottom? I haven't been down to the bottom. But they say, I mean, I've seen pictures. The Colorado River flows through there. Stunning. Just stunning. So, same thing here. The image of God takes male and female. It's, it's a... Uh, it's lots of things that are revealed uh, through a mom and through a dad, through a husband and a wife, through a man and a woman. Headship, partnership, um, harmony, otherness, uh, all those kind of things, closeness. And, and if you're going to reveal the image of God, you're going to reveal the triune God. And it's, so it's not ever a thing where we're competing. It's more we're completing. We don't compete against one another. It's not, I'm better than you in that, okay, or, uh, you know, whatever. It's, I'm with you in that. I'm glad you're good in that. I'm glad you're good in that. Each of us have those kind of aspects. None of us is everything. No one person, no man, no woman. So to reveal the image of God, it takes both. It takes all of, all of that happening uh, second thing, so it's not just man up, woman up, it's how each is made up. What do you mean? Well, it's interesting when you look, I mean, you know, the scriptures have got this stuff in Genesis 2. It says that man, that God took man, he formed him from the dust, dirt. And, but to the woman, different Hebrew words totally. It doesn't say formed. Some translations say fashioned, which is a pretty good thing and it's not dirt it's living flesh Adam's rib and so you've got I, someone put it this way one time and I thought this was good it's like man is manufactured from dirt more like a tool because it's used of weapons being formed of pottery being formed of those kind of things it's more like manufacturing whereas the woman is more sculpted like a work of art and that's a good thing, right? Uh, one application uh, someone shared uh, one time, it said, this was really, really helpful for me, okay? Built into the woman, just kind of baked in, just it's there, is the desire to create beauty. She's a work of art sculpted by God himself. And she desires to create beauty, which means she also likes to beautify the home and herself and her children and all kind of things, right? Do guys like to beautify anything? Eh, it's more function stuff. I'm just saying. And I, used, I remember I've told this to couples that we're going to get married. I said, guys, you know that picture of the tiger you got over your couch? Let it go in the garage. It's just going to be fine there. I, I, I like it. I know you like it. It ain't pretty. It just ain't. Or that rug. Huh, do you, any, you any guys that have one of those rugs, you know, with all the dogs playing pool? How cool is that? Right? No. It's, it's not going in the living room. So, guys, I'm, I'm helping you out here. I don't care how old you are. This is a help. Let her decorate. And don't argue about it. She wants the couch over there. The couch is over there. It's just the way it is. Why? It's just built in. That's what she wants. That's what she likes. I knew a lady, 
had 80 pair of shoes. Now, to me, that's a bit much. But what can I say? I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm not going to get into that, okay? Some of you are going, I got more than that. But basically, when you look at men and women, moms and dads, uh, guys are mostly task-oriented, goal-oriented. That's just, you know, we got to do something. Women are more relationship-oriented. Have you ever been anywhere in a restaurant and all the guys said, I need to go to the restroom. Any of you guys want to go with me? <laughs> no. That's creepy. <laughs> but women, I need to go to the restroom. Anybody want to go? There? Everybody goes. <laughs> What's up with that? I don't know. It's just a difference. It's okay. It's okay. Relationship oriented. And then it's not just man up, woman up. It's not just what we're made up. It's how we measure up. Now, this is very, very, very important. This might be getting to the heart of what we're saying today when we get to, to look at Eve in just a few seconds. Um, how do we measure up? You see, both were created in the image of God. Both are spirit, soul, and body. Both are sinful. Selfish, proud. You say, how do you know that for sure? Well, let me just give you one example. I remember hearing a five-year-old little girl, cute, 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 at a party. Somebody said, me first. You know what she said? Me first next. <laughs> Pure pride, selfishness. Uh, then I heard a little boy, five years old, same thing, at a playground, he climbed to the top of one of the things. You know what he said? Hey, everybody. Now, he didn't know anybody there. Hey, everybody, look at me. He was on top. He was right there. You know, he was the king of the whatever he was on. Now, if you don't believe that people have a sinful nature, you've never had any children or grandchildren. Uh, we have uh, seven grandchildren. Two of them are two-year-olds. They got a sin nature. They need the Lord Jesus in their lives. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so, that's revealing. Those things are needed to reveal the design of God. But what about the reign of God? The reign, he, he gave, he said, I want them to rule over the creation. So the reign of God takes both man and woman. Uh, it's interesting here, you say, well, reign, does that mean like on a throne? Think of the word manage, manager. To manage the creation, you need man and woman. It's not one or the other, it's both. And God knew it was both. That's why he said, let them rule over, let them manage. Why? Because there are certain things a guy will do, and there are certain things a gal will do, and both are needed to manage properly. Now, you know, we all know, we know managers of restaurants or stores or whatever, right? What does the manager do? The manager tries to think of ways to do the best job possible. And some of those managers are men and some of those managers are women. But the point is they have to think beyond themselves to manage well. And that's what God is saying. The rain takes both um, to oversee. Um, the, th the third thing here that reveals the design, the roles of men and women. Hey, a man can't be a woman, and a woman can't be a man. I mean, try, but it, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't working. Men and women in their roles are wonderful. They fit. It's exactly what God wanted. A mom and a dad. You know, I've got four kids, but I've never had a baby. My wife has. I was there. Wasn't a problem for me. I had a snack sack. She wasn't having a snack sack. She was in pain. And I even told her she was in pain. I said, I was looking at the monitor. I said, oh, there comes one. Oh, that. She knew she was having a contraction. But I saw it on the monitor. 
right? And so, the roles. And there's one other thing here, uh, reciprocity. I call it the reciprocity, and the reason I use that word is because it's a good word. It's an R word. But it's also a factor, this reciprocal relationship that we have here. Matter of fact, it's so important, uh, Ephesians 5.33, when Paul is talking about the husband and the wife thing, he says, let every man love his wife and let the woman respect her husband. Well, that's all of that. It's about reciprocity. The husband needs respect. The woman needs love. Well, doesn't the husband need love? Well, sure. As a matter of fact, in the Scripture, there's over 80 one another commands, reciprocal commands. Love one another is just one of them. And it's found at least ten times. So the point is, if you're going to see the image of God, if anybody's going to see the image of God, it's going to take the man and the woman being what God wants the man and the woman to be. Okay? So that's the design of God. That's just that's the blueprint. We're just laying that out. Secondly, Eve was the delight of of Adam. The delight of Adam. As a matter of fact, it's interesting here, the very, very, very first recorded words of any person in Scripture are Adam's words to his wife. And we read it and we kind of go, that sounds weird. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of man. Okay, so it's not a biology thing. It's not a physician's lecture thing what he's saying here from the hebrew it's a it's a really a hebrew poetry it's a tribute to the woman and and you've got in this whole picture here verses uh, 23 24 and 25 you've got the the heartbeat of the relationship identity responsibility and intimacy it's all woven together here because really when he says this is now it's really if you could translate it a little bit better it's like wow that's what he's saying i mean his heart is beating fast his he can't hardly believe what's happened this is so wonderful and so you have that factor then when he says bone of my bones flesh of my flesh well that's a, those are covenant terms but they're also realistic terms he's saying she matches me he had, when, when God, you remember, God's the one who said it's not good for the man to be alone. He's the one who said that. He said that before at the end of Genesis 1, after he's created man and woman and everything, he says then everything was very good. But there was one thing that was not good. It was not good for the man to be alone. God said that. But now Adam is there. He's created all the animals and he realizes none of those are a match. She, well, wow. She's a match. She identifies with me. And then he says, she was taken out of uh, man, so I'm going to call her woman. And, and what this pictures in the Old Testament, anytime someone named something, they were taking leadership in that situation. And they were taking responsibility. What he's saying is, I'm going to be responsible for her. So you've got identity and responsibility and intimacy all wrapped up. And, and then it says, uh, as Moses kind of comments on this, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It's interesting that, um, that Paul picks up on this and actually quotes that verse in Ephesians 5 when he's talking about the, the, the bride of Christ and Christ. When he's talking about the husband and the wife, he's, he's talking about both of them. And, and he is saying here, uh, okay, this is what is meant to be. This is what God wants. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. The word cleave meaning cling to, glue, be glued to. That's the idea here. And that's, so, so Eve is Adam's delight um, and then it paints a picture here in verse 25. The man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. There's a, there's a picture there of closeness, of intimacy, of uh, oneness. Um, and some people say, well, yeah, but what's this naked? 
I don't, I don't, I mean, they were naked like they didn't have clothes like this. But I don't think they were unclothed. I think they were clothed in light. Because Psalm 8 says, You crown them with glory and majesty. Anytime the glory of God comes in the Old Testament, it's blazing light. Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, blazing light. That's what we're going to be clothed in the kingdom. Light. Uh, looks really, really good. And so that's what you have here. The delight to Adam. And that's what a wife and a mom is meant to be. A delight. So, number three, Eve was deceived. Yep, she was deceived. In Genesis 3, everything's going fine, then the snake comes, right? And he puts, casts doubt on God, on God's word, on God's love for Eve, on God's intentions, on God's wanting the best for them, because, you know, he says, no, 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 you'll, if you'll do what I tell you. And the woman looked at the fruit, and the fruit looked really good. And I think Adam's there with her, and he's looking at it. It looks good to him, too. And there's a pattern here. You find it in Eve. You find it with Achan at uh, Jericho. You find it in the, in the New Testament with us. And you find it in 2022. What's the pattern? We see, we desire, or covet is one of the words. We take, then we hide. I mean, over, 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 over. Again, it's interesting in James chapter 1, it says uh, nobody when he's tempted is tempted by God because God doesn't tempt anybody. But each one is tempted when he is enticed and drawn away. Then he sins and sin conceives and gives birth to death. That's what it says in James chapter 1. Nothing's changed since Genesis 3. It's that whole thing of, I see, the, oh, it looks good, and I covet it. I desire it. Why, do I, why am I enticed that way? By the way, let me stop right here. Time out, time out. You know how many fishing lures there are? Anybody have a, a clue? Hundreds, hundreds. There's at least 30 different categories of lures. Why? Well, crappie like one thing, bass like another thing, trout like another thing. So everything's a lure. In James chapter 1, when it says enticed, uses a, a Greek word. It's the same word that's used in Greece today for fishing lures. You're lured away. Enticed. Isn't that what a lure is supposed to do? It kind of entices the fish. And the fish goes, hey, look at that. That looks good. And bites it. But what's in the lure? A hook that will take them out of their world, and fry them up. Right? The devil wants to do the same thing to you. And so what will he do? Well, he knows some things that will entice you won't entice me at all. So he uses a different bait. One bait for you, another bait for the next person next, sitting next to you. That's just what he does. He's smart. And that's what he did with Eve. And so she is deceived. And Adam is deceived too, I think. But Adam was more than deceived. He was defiant. He just said, no, I'm just going to eat this. See, life can be tricky and temptation can be slippery. And, and uh, that's just kind of the way it is. You've got to watch out. Um, fourth thing, and this is the good part to me. Eve was destined to be a mom. You see, God came walking with a mercy mindset when he came walking in the garden. I mean, he confronted them. What did you do? Then he said to the serpent, um, I will put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He, the seed, will bruise you, crush you on the head, and you will bruise him or wound him on the heel. The first gospel promise, Genesis 3.15. But what's he saying there? God is saying that the woman is going to have a baby. He's saying we're going to have a mother here. She's destined to be a mother. And this destiny is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. Because what we're going to do is bring about salvation 
And that's what um, that's all about. Destined to be a mother. Fifth thing, um, Adam described Eve as a mother who trusted God and his word. Now, this is the hard thing in Genesis chapter 3. There were three things that go on here with Eve. And we read it at the first, Genesis 3.20. Her name, uh, it says there, now the man called his wife's name Eve. Now, wait a minute, time out, time out. She already had a name. He called her woman, Isha, because she was taken out of man, Ish, Hebrew. Ish, Isha. She already got a name. Why are we changing the name? Seed like boom quickly. I think they did. But that, that's another thing. We, a, lot of, a lot of times we think things in Scripture that aren't necessarily so, right? So he renames her Eve because she's going to be the mother of the living. And ultimately, the seed that's going to come is going to be the ultimate living one. Um, what did the angel say at the tomb to the women? Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He rose just as he said. And he said it at least six times to the disciples that he was going to die, but that he was going to rise again. He told them that over and over. Oh, they didn't get it. They never got it. So here we see her name Eve, living, she gets a new name. But that wasn't all that she gets. You see, I believe with Eve receiving the name, it's all kind of, it's all kind of like her profession of faith. She says, yeah, okay, I'll be Eve. Why? Because she believed the word that God had said too. They put their trust that God was going to provide the seed who would take care of the serpent and deal with all of that. And there, there's one of the, the, the necessity that she's got to have a baby. This is necessary. And the third thing, now, trust me on this one, guys, new clothes. She's got to have new clothes. Guys, do your li wives like to shop for clothes? My wife, and my, i got three daughters, okay? My mom's a woman, and my sister's a woman, all of them go for clothes. Uh, I mean, we guys wear clothes, but we don't shop. I mean, we know what we want. Go get it. Boom. Out. Done. My wife can go shop. And just look at clothes, but not buy anything. Well, I didn't like that. It wasn't on sale. wasn't the right price. Okay. Why? Because that's just how she's built. That's the way she does. But here in Genesis 3, the Lord did something interesting. Verse 21, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. She gets new clothes. Well, what's, what's the point here? Animal skins? That means animals had to die. Blood had to be shed. There had to be a death. Why? Because Adam and Eve had sinned. And they had to have animal skins. Well, what would those animal skins be like? Well, what if they already had some clothes, right? Fig leaves sewn together. Have you ever seen fig leaves? They're beautiful. And I guess sewed together, they'd be really pretty. But they're not going to last. Animal skins? Hey, I've got a leather jacket that I got back in the 90s. I've still got it. Why? It lasts. Have any of you ever had a leather anything? Yeah, it lasts. Fig leaves? Not so much. And God knew, fig leaves, bad cover-up. We always try to cover our sin with bad ideas. And God says, no, I want you to wear this. What's it going to be? It's going to be a reminder of sin, but it's also going to be a reminder of forgiveness, of covering. Now, i got something for you. My daughter went to China one time on a mission trip. She brought this back to me. I love it. Can you all see this? It says, Righteousness. See that? That is the word righteousness. That's the, the Chinese word for righteousness. Now, you know, all Chinese words are a pictograph. You know what the word for freighter is? You'll love this. Eight people in a boat. Where'd they get that idea? I'm just saying. 
You know what this word means for righteousness? Lamb over me. Lamb covering me. Now, where'd they get that idea? I don't know. But I have a sneaking suspicion. I don't know this for sure, but I have a sneaking suspicion that these were lamb skins, lamb slain, and then they were covered, and they walked out of the Garden of Eden with lamb skin tunics. Why? Well, you see, the Lord knew. He knew all this was going to happen. When he comes walking in the garden, he deals with their sin, he deals with them, he talks to them, and he gives them everything about what's going on. But he also does so in a way that they have a new name for Eve, a new heart, and new clothes. That's what we all need. Not just moms, dads too, children, students, youth, senior adults, anybody on the planet needs a new heart, needs a new name, needs new clothes. Right? That's what we need. And that's what we find here. Now, I'll conclude this with this. Uh, in chapter 4, uh, Eve was indebted to the Lord for Cain being born. As a matter of fact, she named him Cain, which is from the Hebrew word, or similar to the Hebrew word um, for acquired, Cana. Um, because he was acquired from the Lord. She knew it was the Lord. Now, she knew that Cain was from the Lord, but what she didn't know is that he wasn't of the Lord. He went the wrong way. He chose his own selfish way. And then later on, at the end of chapter 4, the seventh thing, he was dependent on the Lord. Different attitude, different mindset. And so she had a baby boy, named him Seth, which is also similar to the Hebrew word sheath or sheth. And so Seth, what does that mean? It means appointed or put in place or whatever. And what did she say? This one was put in place in place of Abel. Why? Because Cain killed him. And so you see here in Eve, the first mom, she knew. Okay, I need a new name. I need a new heart. I need new clothes. And I need a dependence on God at all times. That's what we find in her life. So, today, Mother's Day, bottom line, two things. Um, All of us have a mom, right? All of us have a mom or a mother. Or if you're from England, you have a mum. All of us do. So be the child God created you to be. And secondly, be the mom God made you to be. And there's, now, so what does all this mean? Seven statements. God was thinking and planning us before there was any one of us. Trust him in his design. Number two, we're very valuable in God's sight. Don't forget it. Very valuable. As we've seen even on the video, how valuable moms are. Number three, each is unique in God's creation. You're unique. Equipped exactly to do what he wants. Be receptive and teachable from him. Uh, Number four, anyone can be led astray. Not just Eve, not just Adam, anyone. Watch out. Number five, anyone can be useful in what God's doing. Cooperate with him. Number six, humbly receive from him what he alone can give. Acknowledge him in his giving. Start with thanking him. Number seven, know that God is not finished with us or what he's doing. There's much more to come. Be expectant. Be dependent. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for Eve, for Adam, for what you did in their lives, through their lives. Thank you most of all for the Lord Jesus coming and uh, fulfilling that promise and continuing to work all those things in us. We thank you for that, Lord. Um, we, we, uh, we're pretty frail, you know that, but thank you that you have chosen to, to stick with us and to uh, carry us through. We bless you for that. Lord, I pray that if anyone in this room or anyone online has never had 
an opportunity to call on you to get that new name and new heart and new clothes, that today would be the day, the most important day of their lives, the most crucial day ever that lasts forever. And, Lord, we pray that uh, you'll speak to our hearts in these moments as we sing. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sorry, mothers through the years, they've been a mother at great cost, made many sacrifices. Our Lord Jesus, when he went to the cross, he paid a great sacrifice for us. So how will we respond to him today in love and in thanksgiving? So let's stand together and sing, There's Room at the Cross. You come if the Lord leads you.
The hand of my Savior is strong, and the love of my Savior is long. Through sunshine or rain, in loss or in gain, the blood flows from Calvary to cleanse stain. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. We thank the Lord today that he's had room for us and how he's loved us and how he's cared for us. How many of us have had mothers that loved us and had room for us. Maybe at moments when they should have just kicked us out of the house but they had love and patience and kindness. Let's go forth and love our mothers and the ladies who have cared for us like mothers, teachers, and so many that have been in our lives. Will you bow with me? Father, on this Mother's Day, we've been reminded how you've designed, fashioned, and built into our mothers and to the women all around us special traits and abilities and kindness and love that's beyond our understanding. And yet, Lord God, we've seen love in you and patience in you and the room you make for us in your kingdom. Help us to respond in your kind of love. Go with us this day. Help us to be an example to others. Help us to make room in our lives for you, to make room in our lives for others. And let us bring honor and glory to your name. In Jesus' name, I pray.